Hello again. We're doing compound events, figuring out the probability of compound events. And I don't have any Skittles with me or any markers or marbles. And if this were a classroom, you'd use a more, um, you'd use a more uh, detailed approach than what you're going to do. But all I really have right now is uh, a circle with numbers in it. And basically what it represents is the sample space of dice. I can roll a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, or a 5, or a 6. you got to use your imagination there. It's you know, not the most interactive. Probably wouldn't do this, but you know, over the course of the video, I would. So these are the possible outcomes that I can roll on a die. And I've got a compound event, which is basically an and, excuse me, which is an or, or a and. And then you can also use the word then. And and then are the same thing. So students usually get a little confused there. So the first example says, what's the probability that I'm going to roll a 6 or an odd number? Well, let's figure it out. The chances that you're going to roll a 6 are 1 out of 6. The word or means plus. Now what are the chances or the likelihood that you're going to roll an odd number? Well, there's 1, 2, 3 out of 6. 1 sixth plus 3 sixth is 4 sixth. When you reduce 4 sixth, it comes out to 2 thirds. And that's the answer, or point, or excuse me, or 66.66% repeating over and over. So your probability or likelihood of rolling a six or an odd number is two thirds. You just add them together. That's a little arbitrary in a statement. It's too general. You need two examples to see the difference between them. Here's what I mean. What's the probability of a prime? Rolling a prime. Before I do that, I should probably explain what a prime is because a lot of students don't know what a prime is. Sometimes a prime number is a number that can't be split. Uh, even numbers can be split, except for the number 2. Uh, and some odd numbers can be split and some can't. So a prime number is basically a number that you can't use factory trees with. And 1 doesn't count. 1 is not a prime. The lowest prime number is actually a 2. And a lot of people don't know that sometimes. And I do know that's the case because I was sitting with some friends and... and it's a stupid story anyways. But uh, we were trying to list all the prime numbers from uh, up to 100 and somebody said it was 1. So clearly everybody doesn't know that. Anyways. So 2 is the lowest prime number that you can use. So what's the probability of rolling a prime? Well, 2 is a prime number. 3 is a prime number because it can't be split. 4 is not. 5 is. So it's 3 out of 6. Now the word or means plus. What's the probability of rolling an odd number? 1, 2, 3. 3 out of 6. That is not correct. Because basically what 3 6 plus 3 6 is, is 6 6 or 1. Your probability is 100% that you're going to roll a prime number or an odd number. Garbage. Because 4 and 6 are neither prime nor odd. So this doesn't work out. Well, actually it does. When you use an or problem, you have to account for the difference of A and B. Uh, basically the prime and the odds. So, are there any numbers in this uh, subset that actually do not qualify? And what I mean by that is this. Uh, what is prime and odd? Because that's what you have to subtract to account for the difference. So you add these together. It's 6, 6. You don't have to. You can actually subtract first. And then now you subtract what is a prime number and an odd number. Well, let's see what's prime and odd. Okay. One is neither prime nor odd. I'm sorry. It's, neither, it's not prime, but it's odd. Three is prime and odd. And 5 is prime and odd. These are the only two numbers that are both prime and odd. So what I have to do is I have to subtract 2 out of 6. Now the reason why I have to do that is because otherwise I'm going to double count. I'm going to say, well, I counted 3 and 5 one time, and I'm going to count 3 and 5 again. You can't do that. You can only count them once. So 6 6 subtracting 2 6 is 4 6, which is 2 thirds. And I'll go ahead and show you. It has to be prime or it has to be odd. Okay, 1, 2, 3 is the odd number. 2 is prime. That's 4 out of 6, which reduces it to 2 thirds. So that's the case with that. Uh, watch out for or problems. Don't just always add them without subtracting uh, what is prime and odd, or what is subtracted by A and B. That's a little too technical of jargon. All you really got to do is think about that, and it makes a lot more sense. Next one is what's the probability or the likelihood of a prime number and then odd number. So basically what that means is I'm going to roll the dice, yay, and then I'm going to roll the 
dice again. With an or problem, we're just saying, well, it could be this or this. An and then problem means, well, I gotta do this, and then I gotta do it again. So what's the probability or likelihood of rolling a prime number? Well, let's find out. Three over six. There's a likelihood of three out of six that it's prime. Okay. And then does not mean n. It means multiply. So many students get, uh, have trouble with that. And I'll kind of explain in just a second. And then an odd number. What's the probability of rolling an odd number? One, two, three. Oops, there you go. There you go. Three over six times three over six is the same thing as uh, that's one, that's two, that's two, that's one. Basically what I did was I cross canceled. So that's one fourth. You have a 25% chance or a one out of four chance of rolling a prime number and then an odd number. Basically what I mean by that is this. Uh, what are the chances that I'm going to shoot a free throw and then I'm going to shoot uh, another free throw? Just because I made the first free throw doesn't get mean I'm going to make the second free throw. So I'm not going to add up my probability. I'm not going to add my chances. Of, oh yeah, I'm so good. No, I stink at basketball. What I'm saying is, okay, I'm going to try it. If I make it, that's one event. And then I'm going to try it again and try to do it again. It's very difficult to do this over and over and over and over again. You know, only the best basketball players in the world get paid for that. So, and then says, let's do this. Okay, keep that as one event. And then multiply it by the chances of this or the likelihood of this. Basically, what that means is your probability is going to go down again and again and again and again. It's going to get lower. Uh, one more example before I just say I do. Let's say I'm an 80% free throw shooter. What's the probability I'm going to make my shot, make it, make it 10 times in a row? Well, that's very difficult to do. You know, I'm pretty good, but I don't know if I can make 10 out of 10. So what I do is I take, you know, 8 out of 10 times 8 out of 10 times 8 out of 10 times 8 out of 10, 10 times. And what's going to happen is you're going to find out that my probability of making 10 shots in a row isn't really that great. I mean, I am an 80% free throw shooter, but 10 in a row, that's a lot. I'm just dragging with this. I hope that makes sense. At least it's a pretty decent introduction. I'll see you later. Have a great day. Goodbye.